What's up? What's going on? In today's video, we're going to start reviewing public exploits. Now, the objective and the purpose of reviewing public exploits relies, uh, not relies, sorry, uh, revolves around learning how to use the exploits, learning how exploitation works, how to use the exploits, and most importantly, how to protect yourself. And during the process, you can also learn how uh, some, you know, products like WordPress, the mechanism of these products, how these products work, the fundamentals. So in this video, I'm going to go over the CVE 2019-89242. This is a vulnerability that affected WordPress before 5.0.0. So if you have a WordPress running before 5.0.0, go ahead and update it. Now, the CVE number, as you can see, 2019-89242, and the title is Image Remote Code Execution. So the attacker here, they can execute remote code, right, using an image. Now, I draw this diagram here just to explain to you how the process works, and then we're going to dig down to the exploit code and the vulnerable code. So basically here, I have an attacker, right, sitting behind the internet, and I have a vulnerable server running WordPress before 5.0.0. So basically, this server, right, running WordPress is vulnerable to CVE, 2019-89242 image remote code execution. So the attacker here, in order to exploit this vulnerability here, they need to have access. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean admin and password. You just need to have an access. It could be author, it could be editor, any type of user that the attacker have got access to. In this case, they have got access to admin and password. If you have an access, the attacker now can then craft a command now, as you can see, rcewordpress.py is a, it's a exploit. We're going to explain how the exploit works in a while. Now, here's the URL, the username, the password, and the name of the theme. And we're going to explain why we need to know the name of the theme. Now, basically, the name of the theme is 2017, assumingly, hypothetically saying it is 2017. Now, it could be any other theme. Now, how you can find the name of the theme? We can find this by using WB scan. And we are assuming that the attacker has arrived to the point of knowing the theme name, right? Uh, we assume that the attacker has gone through the cyber kill chain. They have conducted the uh, scanning, the enumeration, and have determined that the target is running WordPress before, uh, before 5.0.0, and the theme is 2017. That is the scenario, right, in general. Now, let's go ahead and explain the exploit that go over first the vulnerable code, why it is vulnerable. So basically here, the vulnerable code. Now, the vulnerability lies in the WB attached file. Now, what is WB attached file? Basically, WB attached file is post meta, right? When you create a post in WordPress, there are metadata attached to the media files. So when, whenever you upload an image to WordPress, there is a meta key here called WB attached file. WordPress calls this every time you want to edit the image. So in this case, the image name is evil.jpg and the post ID it's attached to has ID 50. Now, whenever you want to edit this image that you have uploaded, WordPress will call the WB attached file. Now the vulnerability is here. The attacker will be able or are able to change this and whatever they want here. That's in a nutshell. Now, how the vulnerability starts. So basically, this is the code for changing the description or editing an image. So whenever you edit an image in WordPress, change the description or the name, this happens. The edit post function is called to perform the change. Now, where is the vulnerability, guys? Where is the weakness here? As you can see, update post meta. So as you can see here, the update on the post meta right, uh, among these values is the WP attached file, right, as you can see, no check is made when updating post meta values, and thus, the WP attached file can be changed to any value leading to path traversal, so what's going to happen here is the attacker will edit the image, right, they will upload an image, edit it, and change the value of this, why, because there is no uh, sanitization here or check on this, data. Now, 
here is the crop image function. Now, why we are calling the crop image function here? So the vulnerability guys here uh, requires the attacker to upload an image, all right, then crop it. When they crop it, they will create, as you can see, source file. Now here is, uh, they will put their own um, path, all right. This path, this path will be called by the, there will be crop image and the, uh, the save. So it seems like complicated, right? But basically that's, that's, what, that, that's what happens actually. They will up, attacker upload an image, right? And then they will edit the image, by right? edit post. And after that, as you can see here, when the they crop the image, WordPress will try to fetch the image here from the WB content uploads. If it doesn't find, it will attach it from the source file. The source file, as I said earlier here, is controlled by the attacker. Why? Because they change, they can't change on this value. Once they can change on this value, they can control the URL from which the WordPress will find the image. Now, by default, um, since the image is controlled by the attacker, WordPress will not find the image in the uploads directory first. It will fetch the image from the URL. And the URL here, as you can see, is concatenated to WP content uploads. So, and again here, there is no check on this variable, which is controlled by the attacker. As you can see, attachment ID, WP attached file, right? So that's where the problem starts. Now, if you get down, Again, when the attacker saves after the edit, crop, they need to save, right? When they save the image, the destination file here, they save it in the destination file. Again, the destination file, which is here, there's no check on the file. As you can see, it directly saves the results on the destination file. There's no check. There's no check on it. The cropped image, right, is saved in the destination file with no check and attached directly to the uh, WP content uploads. Now that is the vulnerable code, guys. So the, of course, it is the vulnerability is patched in versions after 5.0.1. So everything after 5.0.1, not exploitable by, uh, not exploitable, right? This vulnerability doesn't exist on versions after 5.0.1. Let's see now how the exploit code takes advantage of this vulnerability or of this vulnerable code. Now here's the exploit code. Of course, I will put the links to all of the uh, data. I'll put the link to the vulnerable code and I'll put the link to the exploit code. It's an exploit database, by the way, the exploit code. So basically, let's start. This is the Python exploit. And what you need to feed to the, uh, as an argument, we have to put the, as you can see, target IP and port. In your case, it could be a URL, the username and password, and they are very important and required to perform the exploitation, the username and password. And as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be an admin. It could be any username registered on the WordPress. And here the WordPress theme can be determined from or by the WB scan. Let's get down a bit and see here. So basically this is your LHost parameter, and L ports. And so this means you need to start netcat listener on this IP. Of course, you can change it to your own IP and the port. Now, if you get down here, this is the image name. Now, this name or this image will be uploaded here in the WB attached file. This is the image, it's controlled by the attacker. So, what you need to do in this image, as you can see, there are the instructions. You need to create an image or just download an image, right? It could be any image. Now, then you have to place the image in the same directory as this exploit. After that, inject the payload, PHP payload via Exif tool. So basically, if you know Exif tool, I have explained this tool previously, uh, we can append data or append metadata, right? In this case, the attacker has run Exif tool on the image and they said that add this PHP code, right, to the copyright notice metadata. So you have to do this before you upload the image to the WordPress installation. Now, place this image in the same directory as the exploit and nothing else you need to do. Now let's get down and explain what's, what happens. Here it logs in with the details or the credentials you have provided. Now once the login is done, right, what's gonna happen here, 
it will upload the image. So starting from here. Here it uploads your image. Okay, the image that you have created. Uh, no, not this line actually, this line. Here, the image, right, that or into which we appended the exploit or the PHP payload, it will be uploaded to the directory, as you can see here. Image ID, starting from here. Once the image is uploaded, guys, what's gonna happen? Let me get down. So, once the image is uploaded, from starting from this line, no, we have to create a post first. Post URL. Nope. Okay, here the image is being cropped, and okay, the post. So basically, here we create the post. Now, most importantly, guys, as you can see, if we get back to the vulnerable code. The image that you will upload or the exploit will upload for you will be stored in the WB attached file, which is the vulnerable part uh, in this uh, scenario. Now, basically, if we come back here, after the image is uploaded, right, the grouping part starts here. And the attacker actually has considered this part by grouping the image, starting from here. So here we crop the image, and if we get down, lastly we create the post. So like you create a post in WordPress, you just hit on post, add a new post, right? In the new post, or, in the, or during the new post creation here, the attacker has, or they, you know, append their own URL. So basically here, when you create the post, if you get down more, you will see here um, the URL. This is the URL, which is actually a netcat reverse shell. So this one here, as you can see, is appended to the post ID and the, the original URL. These parameters correspond to first there will be attached file as the image and the source file, the source file that is not checked right against a blacklist or uh, not allowed entries is controlled by this URL. And if you get down more to see here, it will be saved in the destination file, which is saved in the theme directory. Now, I want to answer a question here. Why we, or why the theme, why so far, we don't know why we need to add the theme name. So the reason behind this is this. Let me get down, scroll down. Looking for where was this? So there was a template where we where you, you can create um, specify a template for every post. That's why it was required to append the theme. I'm trying to find the function for this. Anyway, um, I think I need to just a second WP. Okay, that's it. So basically, here, after we create the post successfully, it is very required that we put the uploaded image in the directory of uh, the theme. And that is accomplished by the WP page template. So basically what's, what's happening here, when we create a new post in the exploit, the post will have a specified and special template. This template contains the image or the image that contains the exploit code. So or the payload, sorry. So basically, unless you define, unless you define the theme right here, if you don't define the theme name, 
So your image or the image that contains the payload right here will not be uploaded to the right path, all right? It will, be, it will be uploaded to some other path because when we create a new post, right, the images will be uploaded to uh, the WB content, the WB content uploads, and everything in this, this directory cannot be executed, right? So if you upload a shell.php, it will be treated as an image or it will not be uploaded at all. Slash uploads, slash anything else. That's why here, what's happening, when you, when you define the theme name, as you can see here, up here. I mentioned actually, I don't know why I'm going up again. When you define the theme name, so here what's gonna happen, there will be a dashed file, which is here, the variable part, will contain the image name and path traversal, themes directory, the WB theme, and here some uh, theme, right? It could be 2017. So that's why it's important to define the theme name so your image will be stored in the right directory where it will not be blacklisted. All right, so that was about today. I hope you liked the explanation of both the vulnerable code and exploit. And lastly, the uh, diagram here. All right, so see you in the next video.